Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope everything is going well for you. Today, I am going to walk you through the TIG welding system parts and how they all work. I'd like to give you a glimpse into how the parts work for those of you who are planning to use a TIG welding system. Stay tuned if you want more information about this. So, let's just get started. Unlike gas and manual metal arc welding, TIG welding technology uses an inert gas shield instead of slag to protect the weld pool and has been a major factor in the acceptance of high-quality welding. TIG welding system parts in their work During TIG welding, an arc is formed between a small diameter tungsten electrode and the workpiece. These are the main components of the equipment. Power source, torch, backing system, protective equipment, power source. When using a DC or AC power source, TIG welding's output is referred to as a drooping or constant current characteristic. The arc voltage and welding current relationship provides a constant current. The length of the arc in TIG welding is determined by how consistently the welder holds the torch above the workpiece. The voltage of an arc is directly proportional to its length, so a longer arc has a higher voltage and a shorter arc has a lower voltage. Changing the arc length by 3 or 4 millimeters can easily change the voltage by 5V as a result of its design. The TIG power source has a limited range of current and a reduced variation in voltage with respect to change in current. The variation of current over a variation of 5V might be as little as 10A, giving almost imperceptible changes to the weld pool, which simplifies welding control. High-frequency sparks usually ignite the arc by ionizing the gap between the electrode and the workpiece. The HS spectrum generates airborne and line-transmitted interference, so it is important to avoid interference with control systems and instruments near welding equipment. In sensitive areas, non-HF welding techniques, such as touch starting or lift arc, can be used. It is possible to short-circuit the electrode to the workpiece, but the current will only flow when the electrode is lifted off the surface. Due to this, there is little risk that the electrode will fuse to the workpiece surface and form tungsten inclusions in the weld metal. When it comes to high-quality applications, HF is the best choice. DC Power Source Due to the concentrated arc produced by DC power, the workpiece receives most of the heat, so this power source is commonly used for welding. However, the cathode roots on the electrode, DC electrode negative polarity, result in little cleaning of the workpiece surface. Prior to welding, it is important to clean the surface and ensure that the gas shield is effective. Power sources such as transistors and inverters are becoming more prevalent for TIG welding. Among the advantages are, their small size makes them easy to transport. The arc ignition process is easier. Various operating features, for example current pulsing, are readily available for mechanized operations the output can be pre-programmed. Micro-TIG welding can be done with very low currents due to the greater stability of these power sources. Plasma welding has largely been replaced by these methods for micro-welding. AC Power Source Using AC power is necessary for materials like aluminum, which has a tenacious oxide film on its surface. The periods of positive electrode polarity will remove oxide from the surface by switching between positive and negative polarity. Conventional sine wave AC has the following disadvantages over DC. An arc that is more diffuse. At each reversal of the current, HF is required to reignite the arc. When the electrode is heated too much, it becomes impossible to maintain a tapered point, and the end becomes balled up. For welding aluminum, square wave AC, or switch DC, power sources are particularly attractive. Switching between polarities makes arc reignition easier, reducing or eliminating HF. To determine the relative amount of heat generated in the workpiece and the electrode, it is important to imbalance the waveform, vary the proportion of positive to negative polarity. A positive polarity power source is used to weld the root run to generate the maximum amount of heat. For filler runs, a greater proportion of negative polarity should be used to minimize electrode heating. It is possible to maintain a pointed electrode by using 90% negative polarity. When molding heavily oxidized aluminum, a balanced electrode polarity, 50% positive and 50% negative, is preferable. 
Torch Different torch designs are available for welding, depending on the application. Foot controls are often preferred over designs with an on and off switch and current control in the handle. Mechanized applications, such as orbital and bore welding of pipes, require specialized torches. Electrode For manual welding, the electrode tip is usually ground to an angle of 60 to 90 degrees, regardless of the electrode diameter. It is important to grind the tip consistently between each welding session and check its condition between welds, as the angle of the tip determines the shape of the arc and impacts the penetration profile of the weld pool. A pure tungsten electrode is often used for AC currents. As a result of the heat generated during the positive half cycle, the electrode tip generally adopts a spherical profile. Gas shielding The torch nozzle should be equipped with a gas lens to ensure laminar gas flow. Gas protection will be improved for sensitive welding operations, such as welding vertical corner and edge joints and on curved surfaces. Additionally, a wide range of nozzles is available to ensure a variety of gas coverage. The choice of the nozzle is largely determined by the electrode diameter and the accessibility of the assembly to be welded. Backing System Shielding gas is used to protect the underside of the weld pool and weld B from oxidation when welding high-integrity components. For sheet components, dams and plugs for tubular components. A local gas shroud is used to reduce gas consumption. Even a small amount of air can cause poor well bead profiles in stainless steel and decrease corrosion resistance. The length and diameter of the pipe determine the pre weld purge time with gas backing systems. A minimum of five volume changes must be achieved before welding by setting the flow rate and purge time appropriately. Protecting and supporting the weld bead is also done with stick on tapes and ceramic backing bars. In manual stainless steel welding, the flux cord wire can be used instead of solid wire in the root run. By doing this, the under bead is protected from oxidation without the need for gas backing. Inserts It is possible to improve root penetration uniformity by using a pre-placed insert. It is primarily used to prevent suck back in autogenous welds, especially overhead. Even with an insert, welding is not any easier in skill, is still required to prevent problems of incomplete root fusion and uneven root penetration. Protective Equipment It is recommended that the head or hand shield be made from a slightly darker glass than the one used for MA welding. This is all about TIG welding parts and how they work. In case you are still unsure about how to get into account this, feel free to let us know in the comment section. Until then, please do not hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video.